Yeah. I'm just going to play this pot, pot luck with the beanie off now and it's just got their cellar tape on so we'll see how we go. A little bit of wind coming up here. I would have thought you would find thousands of pygmies on this sort of this sandy soil but then again maybe it's not wet enough. I, I just get, get the general sense from what I've been doing recently with the knowledge about the grain size. Okay let's go back a few, you, if you you know, what do you think the universal surfactant really is, fellas, when you're dealing with grasslands? You know, you've got your 23 uh, root exudates, and you've got your eight or so or more general transport sugars. What are the two transport sugars that are important? You've got your glycophytes, which use, use glucose, and then you've got your grassland sugarcane plants. Get it? So what do you think in a grassland it would be the universal surfactant? When all these plants are photosynthesizing and manufacturing, what do they manufacture? They call it photosynthate, but what are they really talking about? So, what do you think is constantly or continually going into the ecosystem in grasslands? Yeah. Okay, so experiments with the universal surfactant. Normally with my normal sand, that I'm used to the, the true play pit sand, I can get two milk bottles of universal surfactant in there to make it saturated. However, when I went to this new play pit sandwich, tw uh, oh, I by the way, I measured it before I left Adelaide, and um, the, the usual stuff is around about half mil, but the new stuff is around about a mil. 1,200 microns, I think it was, was the, was the new one. The other one was uh, 480, I think it was. I've got it written down somewhere, but anyway before I left. So basically, you know, twice the size basically, that's what I'm saying, roughly speaking, uh, in a nutshell. Yeah, <laughs> how, to make, how to make friends and influence people in a nutshell. Um, don't bullshit them for a start. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go porkies. Oh, <laughs> he didn't make it now. I assume that's a skull of a, is it a seabird? <laughs> and, uh, and he says, when I went to double the grain size, it only took one milk bottle's worth, basically, you know, to, uh, to make it saturated. Uh, so basically, uh, from the grain size I've been uh, looking at now, um, so far it's been about, about 880 or something like that. So, you know, and a bit larger over the one mil. So, you know, I reckon you could get away, you know, all these things could be saturated with only like 1.25 litres of universal effect if they're over the one mil sort of thing, yeah. So why is that important? Well, if you've got a lens of uh, impermeable um, regolith underneath and you've got large expanses of uh, sand, it doesn't take much to fill them up and once they filled up, you know, they remain saturated for... because you only need a little bit more to top them up, you see, to make them saturated again. So if they're starting to lose some moisture due to the, due to the sunage, the evaporation, evapotranspiration or whatever, um, it only takes a little bit of extra rain to top them up again. Because you backed up, and of course the other thing is you've got these massive uh, bodies of water running through the sand, you've got massive pressures as well massive leaching forces and I think we've got a lot is it a green hood or an orchid or something down there no it's a banksia oh it's getting wet oh our first pygmies here we go I think it's just oh I was on spot Cullen again bugger doing that a lot or well, it seems to do that a lot I think when I change the clip oh yeah it's getting wetter so we're heading now to this other cliff face it's going to get wet and we're going to start seeing cephalotis do you think anyway we'll see Okay, back to 49 area. Sorry about that, fellas. When I want to go into Spot Cullen, it's great for the close-ups and like distance shots. You have to have it on for distance shots to, to get the detail. You know, like when you're focusing on cephalodes, you know, 12 feet up or something, you've got to have it on macro, on the uh, Spot Cullen macro, uh, to actually get your detail. Um, oh, I didn't, I got a few uh, screenshots out loud. Some of them are quite good for what they are, considering, you know, you know, I'm... I'd already done the morning session of filming uh, with the um, 
Pemberton tramway and then I'd done half a, a trip's walk out there to the wrong cliff face, if you call it that. Yeah. Considering what I put in that yesterday, and they're half decent, put it that way. I'll put one up on uh, Facebook when we get some uh, transmission. Apparently down here, no internet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I know, fellas. Overseas, it must be laughable, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, don't forget, you know, w WA is a complete, complete Dalek state with the Dalek church, of course, and all that uh, oranges and sunshine business that went on. So, you know, <laughs> and as I say, the Dalek church is six times more likely to do noughties c c compared to all the other religions, apparently to our royal, coming out of our royal commission anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, and it's, it's just going to get worse over the next couple of years when stuff starts coming out in America. And, of course, there's stuff that's happened in Canada and it's related to... Uh, uh, stuff up there and it's just going to get yeah <laughs> people going to some people are going to be running for the hills I don't know whether we'll actually get out of the house or <laughs> and when people find out what's really gone on <laughs> uh, they may actually well in America they'll probably get, get, get gunned down running from the house to the hills <laughs> or they get swooped up and disappeared <laughs> 